I saw some really interesting data today on, on a study done in mid-2021 by Microsoft. So what they were looking at is the whole concept of back-to-back -back meetings and how to make them more efficient. What they did is they did brain research where they actually took volunteers and they hooked up all kinds of things on their heads so they could actually see how their brain was processing and how they worked. And what they did is they they were studying this concept of back-to-back -back meetings and how to and, and how people actually reacted to them. So what they did is they took this group and they had them go through half of them each day. So on one day, people went through four hours of back-to-back -back meetings, watched the, the, how the brain scans worked through all that. On the other day, they went through four hours of back-to-back -back meetings with a 10-minute meditation break between each meeting. And what they did is they took that meditation break and they made it constant. And so it was the same thing that they were doing. They're all using the Headspace Act app and you and using that. So they had had projectability in this test. What they found and then what they did is the next day they reversed the two groups. And so one group was in the back back meetings all day, the other group for four hours, the other one did the did the 10 minute uh, breaks. Okay. So what do you think they found? I bet you, you can guess. Basically, what they found was these following conclusions. Number one, brain stress accumulates across multiple back-to-back -back meetings when you don't take breaks. In other words, the yellow and red and orange in the brain gets bigger and bigger and bigger as you go from one meeting to the next, the stress is accumulating. Now, number two, with breaks, your brain basically resets. And so instead of yellow and red and orange getting bigger and bigger, it goes back to blue, the relaxation response before each next meeting, okay? So you got a choice. You can go back to back and have your brain stress increase, or you can take short breaks and have your brain reset back to blue in between. Number three, breaks help you engage better. So they were looking at one of the frontal lobes, and I never know exactly what lobe does what in my brain. So here's what, here's what they found. The lobe that that controls like the attention and engagement that you're able to show to the meeting, what that lobe showed was when you took breaks between meetings, your engagement factor, that, that lobe of your brain activated at a higher level throughout that process. In other words, what they were saying was you have better engagement and basically higher productivity. You get more and you contribute more in those meetings when you take those breaks. Now, in a minute, I'm gonna apply this to those of us in the expert industry. Don't worry, I'm, I am gonna apply this. Number four, they found what, that the highest stress in this process was in the meeting transitions. So the last five, 10 meetings of this meeting, when you're anticipating moving into the next meeting, plus the first five to 10 meetings of the next meeting, wh during which your stress is highest. So I'm sh they didn't do this, but I'm sure that that's like heart attack time, is when you're in this stress between the meetings. Now contrast this with your brain going to blue, your brain relaxing, your brain resetting in this process. So here's the thing for us in the expert space. Number one, oftentimes we are doing multiple calls during a day. So coaching calls, training calls, Q&A calls, those kinds of things. And what this applies is saying, if you'll take that 10 minute break in between, you will be more engaged, lower stress, and that stress doesn't build up throughout your day, and 
you'll be able to avoid those high periods of stress as you go from one meeting into the next. Key. Second thing that they didn't bring up in this in the conclusions to the study, but seemed obvious to me, is a great way to take a break is to meditate. Okay, so it's not walk downstairs, open the fridge, and grab something out to increase your fat content. It's meditate so that you can increase your brain power during that time. So that wasn't an official conclusion from the study, but I bet that it's something that researchers are going to look at is what are the best way to take breaks. So what they suggested in this process is that a company, and you can do this with your own company, let's say, so what they said was, if this company would start all meetings at five minutes after the hour, and those meetings would only go for 25 minutes, and then start the next, and then give everybody a five minute break, and then start the next meeting at 35 minutes after the hour to go to the top of the hour, they said those companies will be significantly more productive than if they schedule meetings half an hour at a time with no breaks in between. In other words, so we'll likely get more done with breaks than without them. And the final conclusion that I get out of all this is that our bodies and brains already know the answers. I mean, there's absolutely nothing revolutionary in this study. I read it and I said, well, duh, I knew that. Do I do it? No, <laughs> but my body and my brain already know the right way for us to act. We should just tune into those and act the way our bodies and our brains are already telling us are the right things for us to do in our lives. So key conclusions. Number one, take breaks. Number two, no back-to-back -back meetings. Okay, number three, listen your body and brain. It knows what's right. Think about this in the process of building and designing your schedule, your day, your life. My gut feeling is, and I know this happens to me, when I have meetings of all day training, all day whatever without breaks in between, I walk out of those days far more exhausted than the ones where I take breaks in the process. What's your experience with this? Let me know in the comments. This is Don Crowther saying, just go do this stuff. Mm -hmm.